Every year we like to stop at the halfway point and take a look back at everything good that we've played. So today we're talking about 10 of the best games of 2019 so far. The first half of the year. Now keep in mind, these are our personal choices. The Game Ranks team got together and really just kind of cobbled together a little compilation of some of the best things that we've been playing, the things we've been enjoying the most. For the more indie style games, we might focus that on another video later on down the line. But anyway, let's get started off with number 10 and talk about Mortal Kombat 11. First things first, let's talk about that single player campaign because number one, it's awesome for a fighting game to have a full-fledged, lengthy single player campaign, but Mortal Kombat 11 really nails it. It balances a really good line between cool new Mortal Kombat stuff and plenty of nostalgia. There's a whole time warp mechanic. Go back to the 90s. Different dimensions, and it's just incredibly satisfying. Not only that, of course, once again, we get a really satisfying fighting game that's just fleshed out as hell. Very heavily combo focused, and you know, you can't really button and mash your way through this one. It also looks incredible. The character skins are really satisfying. Changing the look of your character with unlocks is very, very enjoyable. Really, you think I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I, it keeps happening. NetherRealm just does a really good job at consistently putting out really badass fighting games that are fully featured and just worth picking up. And I'm glad that Mortal Kombat 11 just kind of continues that trend. But next over at number 9, let's talk about Kingdom Hearts 3. We gotta give Kingdom Hearts 3 some love. I know diehard fans have been waiting for this for such a long time, and whether or not it really lived up to your expectations, at least in the end, story-wise, I think throughout that journey, it is still a satisfying and fun Kingdom Hearts game to play. Now, the new sequences are really what are worth mentioning, from Big Hero 6 to Toy Story. There's just a lot of fun stuff here that is lovingly recreated and just fun as hell, man. I mean, like, the Frozen level is really cool, and then they have Elsa come out and do the entire Frozen song just to kind of, like, flex. I don't know what that was about, but I really appreciate it. The combat is fun. It's maybe not as challenging as some of us would have liked it, but some of the visual moves are just so over the top and interesting to look at that you can't just help but smile and have a good time. That's what I came to Kingdom Hearts for, and that's what I got. We have different levels of Kingdom Hearts fandom here in the office. We'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments about Kingdom Hearts 3, because it is a little contentious, but we think it's a really good time, so we're keeping it on this list, man. Next at number eight, a more recent release is Super Mario Maker 2. Now, not enough people played the original Super Mario Maker because it was on Wii U, and that just happened because that console was whatever, but Super Mario Maker 2 puts the game, puts the Mario level creation in Switch users' hands, and thankfully it lives up to the hype. Super Mario Maker 2 is a lot of fun if you are the creative type, if you love building levels, uh, if you look on social media, you look online on threads and forums, people have been creating incredible stuff, insanely challenging, really over the top, and just super charming and different. Unexpected stuff is what you get from this game, and that's great. But on the other hand, if you're not that creative, if you're like me, there are thankfully tons of levels to play through in a story mode. It's not like a regular traditional Mario game, but there is so much to do. And then you can just also download and play other people's levels if you want. Super Mario Maker 2 is undeniably just a great package that is worth considering, even if you're not super creative, thanks to the single player content. But the tools that are there for making fun stuff is just even better and makes it all that much sweeter. But next up at number seven, fittingly, we have Ace Combat 7. Really, what this game is, is essentially uh, Japanese Top Gun. That's it, that's the, whole, that's the whole elevator pitch, that's all you need to know. But seriously, uh, what this game serves as is almost a vessel for new players, considering Ace Combat is a long-running series that has had a cult following for a very good reason, the fact that it exists now in 2019 as a great new game is awesome. It looks fantastic, the dogfighting is tons of fun and accessible, the weather effects are exciting and dangerous, and the story is damn good. Consider this one, seriously, because even if you're not into aerial dogfighting combat style games like me, uh, you'd be surprised. This thing is still really compelling, and there's a reason why people love this series, and there's another reason why it has survived up until 2019. So, next time you're in the store, maybe think about Ace Combat 7. I don't know. 
Next up at number six, we have A Plague Tale, Innocence. This is a game that is in danger of flying under a lot of people's radar, but it's an incredibly fun single player linear experience. People say single player is dead, single player games are dying. Uh, this is a great example of one that is keeping that from actually becoming a reality. Uh, it's very similar to what we've praised quite a bit last year, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, in that it's not super long, but it's really high quality, great visuals, and just kind of doesn't have Say it's welcome, but it's a great playthrough. A Plague Tale Innocence, uh, you step in the footsteps of a young teenage girl who is tasked with carrying her brother across this awful, plague-ridden medieval France. It's somewhat supernatural, a little over the top, because the plague and the swarm of rats are very, very crazy and scary, but the game is grim, dark, disgusting, and nasty, and it's so much fun navigating the horrors of this plague-ridden France. While also doing light combat with some scary enemies, but a lot of environmental puzzles that are fairly satisfying to pull off, it just warrants a good playthrough. The characters are compelling, the story is interesting, and like Hellblade, it's just worth experiencing. Moving on to number five, we did it again. We got Devil May Cry 5. Uh, this is thankfully a great follow-up to Devil May Cry 4. A bit of a return to form for the series, if that was something you are looking for. Uh, this thing plays incredibly well. The fun factor is through the roof because the combat elements in Devil May Cry 5, the, the whole combat and gameplay package is the most fine-tuned and seamless it has ever been. You start out the game as Nero, once again from Devil May Cry 4, but with a ton of new tricks, but then the game opens up to newcomer character V, who has a completely different play style. It's kind of a nice change of pace, but then of course you can also play as Dante. And once you get to play as Dante, the game really picks up with tons of weapon types, and just really, that's when the game really falls into its own in terms of uh, combat, fun factor, and just ridiculousness. About halfway through the game is gonna fire on all cylinders for you, and you are going to have a hell of a time. Not only is the combat incredibly fine-tuned and challenging and satisfying, but visually, Devil May Cry 5 looks insanely good, like almost too good. Uh, this is a game worth pausing and using the photo mode because character models are insane. The environments look great, even though they can get a little repetitive. And you know, if we're talking about negative things, I think the story wasn't as awesome as I wanted it to be. It's kind of wrapped up a little quicker than I expected, but still, the fact that the combat is so much fun and the game so replayable and challenging if you crank up the difficulty, that really all cancels out any bad things about the game. It is so worth playing. The weapons are so worth experiencing. And if you're a fan of these types of games, even just a little bit, this is one worth checking out, seriously. But next up at number four, we got a game that uh, is a little contentious, a little dividing, uh, that is Days Gone. We all kicked this one around for a while, and the more we thought about it, we figured it was worth including. Because, to be honest, Days Gone didn't review too well. Days Gone also has some very clear shortcomings that I think most players can point out themselves. But, for some reason, can't quite put our finger on it, still couldn't stop playing it until the end. Now, of course, it is really long, the open world a little maybe too big for some folks, and uh, it outstays its welcome a little bit, but Deacon St. John as a character and the compelling story makes you want to see it through to the end. I think Sam Witwer's performance as Deacon St. John was compelling and interesting, and you just wanted to look at the screen. And then on the gameplay side, the bike mechanics and just like driving around, racing around on a bike, and also the progression of upgrading your motorcycle just made it really interesting. It made up for the fact that fighting human characters kind of suck, but the zombie encounters were awesome because of those massive, sprawling hordes of them. I wish there were more, but when you encountered them, they were pretty tense. And really, the game is just interesting. Some people love it, some people hate it, we have decided to lean more on the side that we really like it and we're glad it's a game. We're definitely looking forward to seeing what you guys think about this one. Of course, talk to us in the comments about all this and if you're curious about what we really think about it, check out our Before You Buy. But moving on to number three, a game that we really loved in a Before You Buy is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This is of course another FromSoft game, the makers of Dark Souls and Bloodborne. So. Yeah, of course it's good. What they do here differently is what makes it even more interesting. More verticality, more gadgets, a grappling hook, more emphasis on just waiting for the right moment to strike, properly parrying, and really doing all these new combos and abilities that you unlock to counter certain things. It is a really exciting game that manages to make you feel like an actual ninja. That was really ambitious and very challenging to pull off and make it also feel like a challenging, rewarding FromSoft game. But damn it, they did it. The world is creepy and mysterious and intriguing. The enemy types 
are awesome to look at, but also incredibly challenging and beat you into a pulp. You're constantly learning through this game. The game punches you in the face until you figure out all of its systems. You literally can't progress until you do, and that's what makes it really, really fun. Of course, it's definitely not a game for everyone, like all of their games, but it's different enough that I think it's worth checking out. Maybe even if you weren't into Dark Souls, give this a shot. I am just so glad that Miyazaki and his team tried something completely different here and uh, it turned out really awesome, incredibly challenging, and just worth talking about. That's why it's definitely on our list. But moving down to number two, we got Metro Exodus, a game where we really feel like they finally figured out this whole Metro thing. This game is fantastic. Despite the move to semi-open world areas, it doesn't feel shoehorned. We were really concerned here that, uh, you know, the game would go to open world and it would feel like just a waste of space, kind of just like they made it open world to say it was open world. But it makes sense in the context of the game and is very fun and just interesting to go find and forage for new components and upgrades for Artyom. All of a sudden, Metro now has a new and exciting loop that totally makes it even more worthwhile. Not only that, whether you're playing on PC or console, the game looks damn incredible. It is an absolute looker, and I think the move to uh, go away from Nuclear Winter and kind of highlight new areas of this post-apocalyptic nuked-out Russia has given the designers so much to work with in terms of creating interesting environments. The game looks like concept art come to life in a lot of areas, while also still managing to maintain the Metro identity. You know, the thing doesn't forget where it came from. You still find yourself in dark hallways and fighting spooky monsters with tense situations and limited resources. Actually, this game has at least one or two really, really memorable scary sequences that are worth experiencing along with the whole rest of the thing. Not only that, yeah, playing it is great, but the story is interesting as well. This is a world that you want to learn more about. This is a story with characters you want to follow, and really, Metro Exodus just nails it. It's a bummer that it did have some controversy with being an Epic Game Store exclusive on PC, but whether you're playing it on console, or maybe you're just waiting for a year for it to finally come on Steam, uh, regardless, Metro Exodus is damn good. Now finally, down at number one, we have, of course, you guessed it, Resident Evil 2. This remake, reimagining of the original Resident Evil 2 classic is exactly what we were hoping for. It lived up to the name, it lived up to the hype, it lived up to the nostalgia, while also doing its own thing here and there where it really mattered. It's just a fantastic game. It really retains and brings back all those survival horror elements we love so much. It takes, you know, some of the best aspects and modernizations of Resident Evil 7, but of course, puts it in third person, like the old days, and gives us Raccoon City, Leon Kennedy, Claire Redfield, and the whole shebang. What's really exciting though, and, and the game has really blown up, especially with like memes and stuff around Mr. X, is just for the people who haven't experienced it back in the day, experiencing all of this weird, wacky, umbrella, Raccoon City stuff for the first time in 2019. It's just so cool to see that, I, I don't know. But it adds new things here and there to make it really interesting and really fresh, while also having the right amount of callbacks and nostalgia and just faithful recreations of stuff we loved in the original. Not only that, of course, like any good Resident Evil game worth its salt, it's incredibly replayable. There's reasons to go back and replay it on harder difficulties, unlock certain stuff. Top to bottom, like I I'm looking at it as a Resident Evil fan, but like this checks all the boxes. This is a good Resident Evil game. It looks incredible. It's so high budget and action packed and just worth experiencing on that end. But also just if you boil it down to raw gameplay, it's worth it for that too, man. Resident Evil 2 is absolutely worth checking out. We love Love it clearly and that's why it's at number one on our list but of course that's not all there's so many more games we can include we got a couple bonus ones for you the first one is apex legends a free-to-play game that really took the world by storm in terms of just being another good battle royale game but with that fresh delicious titanfall fps style gameplay thanks to respawn now, some people did lose interest. The new update is coming out soon. I'm curious to see if it can keep the momentum going. Who knows? But it's weird that we're talking about it. It's actually like a, a good EA game. <laughs> also, as a runner-up, we have Mordhau, the PC melee historical combat focused game. And yeah, the chat can be a little toxic and gross sometimes, but the gameplay, the core gameplay is so fun. And the whole thing being so competitive, it still is worth checking out. And it's just a really good, solid PC experience. And another one we want to include briefly is Rage 2, another one that divided people, but we think that the injection of a little bit of Doom-style gameplay and just fun abilities to the original Rage, which we weren't crazy about, makes it worth checking out. It's a fun first-person shooter. 
But of course, again, these are our choices for games that we've really liked in 2019 so far, rounding some of them up. We want to hear yours down in the comments because you're definitely going to disagree. There's definitely a game that we didn't include on this list, so we want to hear from you. And of course, like if you can make your own top five or your own top ten or your own top three, let us know. But if you enjoyed this video and maybe learned about a game that wasn't on your radar, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We would appreciate that. And of course, if you're new, it's worth considering subscribing and hitting that notification button because we put out videos every single day. But hey, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.